hello friends welcome to a new lecture today in this lecture i would like to discuss about the lesions of the ocular motor nerve so in the lesions of the ocular motor nerve first if you see you will see that there can be ptosis of the ocular motor nerve okay so uh, the ptosis what is first i'll write or, or first i'll explain what ptosis is and then we will go into the lesions of ptosis okay so first first what is ptosis uh, so if you see ptosis is ptosis is drooping of eyelid okay drooping of eyelids is called as ptosis this ptosis can be congenital or it can be acquired okay congenital it occurs from birth due to hypoplasia of the third nerve congenital causes are it can be due to hypoplasia of third nerve nucleus okay and then it can be acquired if it is acquired you can divide it as it can be unilateral or it can be bilateral okay first let us learn the causes of unilateral ptosis through this diagram and then we will learn the causes of bilateral ptosis okay unilateral ptosis okay now if i think that a person has unilateral ptosis okay how does he uh, by the I mean what are the causes now the main causes of unilateral ptosis are first third nerve lesion okay third nerve lesion if you see now first is the third nerve it will enter into the cerebral peduncles right cerebral peduncles and then it will uh, come downwards so this cerebral peduncles if there is herniation now i'm increasing the size think that there is herniation of this cerebral peduncles because of this herniation i'll write it with this color okay here there is herniation of the cerebral peduncles and the cerebral only even from down so that herniation can lead to first cause first cause cerebral herniation even from above that will lead to compression of third nerve okay that is the first cause second cause then it it is entering it, it will cross the uh, it will cross uh, the superior cerebral artery and inferior and posterior cerebellar artery right sorry superior cerebellar artery and posterior cerebral artery and it will also lie in proximity with an artery which is called as posterior communicating artery there is it also lies in proximity with an artery which is called as posterior communicating artery so i'll just write this this is posterior communicating artery okay the second cause of this uh, ptosis is aneurysms of these arteries what is the second cause second cause whenever there is aneurysms of uh, posterior cerebral artery or superior cerebellar artery or posterior communicating arteries okay any aneurysms even these will compress the nerve okay then then it will enter the midbrain and in the midbrain it crosses dura and then it enters the oculomotor triangle and from there it is entering the cavernous sinus think that there is a, uh, a thrombus in the cavernous sinus so the third cause is cavernous sinus thrombosis in this cavernous sinus thrombosis what will happen whenever there is cavernous sinus thrombosis this will affect fourth and sixth nerves also because even fourth and sixth nerve travel through this cavernous sinus okay then 
uh, sometimes they even occur without involvement of pupillary fibers they will occur in diabetes mellitus and uh, hypertension others others are diabetes mellitus hypertension collagen vascular diseases now uh, what about the other lesions these are the lesions of the um, third nerve now sometimes there is lesion in the sympathetic cervical sympathetic heart so this is a all these are a lesions of third nerve then sometimes there can be this is the b lesions of cervical sympathetic horn lesions of cervical sympathetic pathway and these lesions of cervical sympathetic pathway it is called as horner syndrome okay so these are the unilateral causes of ptosis now what are the and one more by the uni, one more required causes trauma because of trauma there can be anything any of the lesion can occur resulting in these lesions okay now just a minute now what are the bilateral causes we have learned about the unilateral causes bilateral causes are one it can be due to myopathies and two it can be due to myasthenia gravis three it can be due to bilateral horner's syndrome okay three then four it can be due to snake bite five botulism okay one more thing which is important is if you see in bilateral ptosis can also occur from a lesion in oculomotor nerve nucleus which is supplying the levator palpebrae superioris in the midbrain so here this is the cerebral aqueductal layer matter so there can be nucleus lesion here the nucleus edinger vestibular nucleus lesion not edinger vestibular nucleus sorry oculomotor nerve nucleus nerve nucleus lesion reason it supplies both the eyes okay the main cause of ptosis if you see it is mainly due to the palsy of levator palpebrae superioris okay this is about ptosis so now the ptosis which is there how are you going to differentiate it with the horner syndrome the lesion due to horner syndrome and the lesion due to ptosis now if you see ptosis uh, i'll write with other color now ptosis can be again of two types it can be called as um, partial ptosis or complete ptosis 
we call the ptosis as partial ptosis if the lesion is in cervical sympathetic pathway if the lesion is in cervical sympathetic pathway that is in the horner syndrome okay we call it partial ptosis why because the cervical sympathetic nerve this will innervate the tarsal muscles so here there is weakness of tarsal muscles leading to ptosis but it complete ptosis the lesion in third nerve why here because the third nerve will innervate levator palpebra superioris here there is weakness of levator palpebra superioris okay so this is about the um ptosis so thank you guys for watching my lecture thank you